What's up everybody, welcome to another video and I hope you're ready to flex those brain muscles. In this video I'm going to do some examples of word problems involving the law of science and the law of cosine. So if you're brand new to these two concepts, I have some other videos where I introduce them and do some basic examples involving triangles. I'll link that right above here. But in this video we're going to focus on word problems because what I've found is that a lot of students struggle with turning the words into math and figuring it out exactly what it is we have and what we're being asked to find and that sort of thing. So we're gonna get some practice in this video. And I found four examples that are pretty good variety. They use some good vocab words too, like angle of elevation, direction, bearing, those kind of things. So I put these four examples into a worksheet and the link to that worksheet is in the description below if you wanna check that out. And really what I recommend doing is trying some of these problems on your own first, then using this video to check your answers and to like get unstuck from those places you're stuck at. So I will have timestamps in the description too to each problem. Let's jump into the first problem. Coast Guard Station Abel is located 150 miles due south of Coast Guard Station Baker. So 150 miles due south just means directly south. That's the way I think of it. Should be pretty intuitive. I'm gonna write this a little shorter. There we go. So Abel is 150 miles. 150 miles due south of Baker. So we'll call Station Abel A. Station Baker B, I'm gonna fix this 150 real quick. There we go. All right, what other information are we given? A ship at sea sends an SOS call, uh-oh, that is received by each station. The call to station Able indicates that the ship is located north 55 degrees east. So here's some directions. Let's get some practice with this. How do we interpret north 55 degrees east? Well, the way I think of it is the first direction given will always either be north or south, right? In this case, it's north. So that's the direction I'm gonna face. I'm gonna face north, and I'm gonna open up to whatever angle I'm given in whatever direction I'm given. So if I'm given north, I'm gonna face north, 55 degrees east, I'm gonna open up to the east to an angle of 55 degrees. So this is gonna be about 55 degrees. 55, it's exactly 55 degrees. I meant the way I drew it. It's not gonna be perfect, you know what I mean? So hopefully that makes sense. We'll get one more chance to practice right now because the call to station Baker indicates that the ship is located south 60 degrees east. So I'm gonna face south. I'm gonna open up 60 degrees to the east. So this direction here. So let's see if I can draw this properly. And where these two meet, that's where our ship is at. There we go, that's good enough. That's S, our ship. This angle was 60 degrees, right? 60 degrees. And now let's find out what exactly we're being asked to find. How far is the ship from each station? So this is the ship. This is station B, station A. So we want to find how far. So basically we want to find this distance. We'll call it X. And this one we'll call it Y. So these are distances in miles. But we can, for now, think of them as side lengths of a triangle, right? We have one side of a triangle. We want to find the other two side lengths. So first thing, before we jump into the law of sines and law of cosines, the first thing I like to do is look at the problem and think about, is there any more information I can get just from using like basic geometry, right? And in this case, we actually can because we have two angles of a triangle and we know that all three angles have to add up to 180. So we can easily find this angle without having to do any law of sines, law of cosines. And finding that angle is really gonna help us in finishing this problem. So. How I like to think of it is they all have to add up to 180. So I'll add these two together, 55 plus 60, that's 115. Then 180 minus 115 is this angle. Hopefully that makes sense. 180 minus 115, so that's 65 degrees this angle is. And now that really helps us because now we have an angle that's across from a side that are both known. So we can use the law of sines and use the sine of this angle over this side and compare it with this angle over this side to solve for this side, right? So we're in the perfect spot to use the law of sines now. And what we can write is that the sine of 65 degrees over 150, and this is typically when you use the law of sines, is when you have a known angle across from a known side, and you can compare it with another known angle across from an unknown side, or vice versa, a known side across from an unknown angle. So this equals the sine of 55 degrees over x. And there's one thing I like to point out from here. 
You can cross multiply and then divide and do all that to solve for x, but there's actually a cool trick. When we have two ratios that are equal to each other, we can flip them both and the equality still holds, right? So I can simply just flip both sides of this equation and the equality still holds. And I like doing this because it saves me from having to cross multiply. And in fact, you can actually just jump straight to this and you can actually generalize the law of sines as sine A over A equals the sine of B over B, or you could write it as A over the sine of A equals B over the sine of B. Both of those are true, same thing. So in general, when we're solving for a side, it makes more sense to have the side in the numerator because then all we have to do is multiply both sides by the sine of 55. So I just wanted to show that little trick since you're probably already a little comfortable with the law of sines, I figured I'd introduce some little tricks that may make your life easier because now all we have to do again is multiply both sides by the sine of 55 degrees. And what we're left with is 150 times the sine of 55 degrees over the sine of 65 degrees. That's equal to our side length x, which is the distance from the ship to Station Baker. And if you punch that in a calculator, you get 135.58. 135.58 miles, okay? So we'll go ahead and write that here because we're going to need to erase to make room to find this distance. This is 135.58 miles. All right, so let's go ahead and find the other distance. And this time I'm just going to jump straight into that flipped law of sines. It's a pretty cool shortcut. I actually just started doing this this semester. It's saved me some time. But now I'm going to use that same ratio, the sine of 65 and 150, but I'm just going to go ahead and flip it right off the bat. So 150 over the sine of 65 degrees equals y over the sine of 60. Now all I have to do is multiply both sides by the sine of 60. See how much easier that is than cross multiplying and doing all that? It's a little bit easier. So multiply both sides. I'll go ahead and write it down here by the sine of 60 and I get 150 times the sine of 60 degrees over the sine of 65 degrees and then you'll just punch this in. By the way, make sure your calculator's in degree mode if you're punching in degrees, otherwise you'll get some really weird answers. So if you punch this in, you get 143.33 and that's in miles. And so that's the distance from the ship to uh, the port or the station A is 143.33 miles. So if the ship really is sending out an SOS call, it's probably going to get help from Station Baker since that is the closer station. I know it doesn't ask that, but obviously that's what's going to end up happening with this ship is, is Station Baker is going to come help because it is eight miles. I mean, not that much closer, I guess, but it's close enough to where it could make a difference. But hopefully that makes sense. Let's go ahead and move on to problem number two. All right, so number two says two ships leave port at 4 p.m. One is headed at a bearing of north, 38 degrees east. So let's draw this port. There's our port. So let's draw the first ship headed at a bearing of north, 38 degrees east. So what I like to do here is draw maybe a north line, dotted line, because remember, I'm going to face north and I'm going to open up 38 degrees to the east. So right about there. So this angle is 38 degrees. Be careful with that. I see some mistakes made there. This angle is 38 degrees, 38 degrees. It's that angle there, okay? So that's where that first ship is headed and it's traveling at 11.5 miles per hour, okay? The other is traveling at 13 miles per hour at a bearing of south, 47 degrees east. So we can draw, extend our north line to the south as well face south and open up 47 degrees to the east. So this angle here, that angle is 47 degrees. 47 degrees, okay? What is it asking? How far apart are they when dinner is served at 6 p.m.? So they left port at 4 p.m., so it's been two hours. This one is traveling at 11.5 miles per hour. So after two hours, it will have traveled 23 miles. So we can extend this and we can write this as 23. And by the way, I think I just put an M for the last problems. And I think that's technically meters. I think miles is 
m i. So sorry about that. And then this one, let's see, traveling at 13 miles per hour after two hours, so 26 miles. 26 miles, m i, okay? And it wants to know how far apart they are at 6 p.m. So when this length is 23, this one is 26, what is this length? So let's see if I can draw a good line here. Okay, not too terrible. So we want to find this length here. We can call it x. So first, again, first thing we do, can we use any basic geometry to find some stuff that we don't already know? It turns out again that we can. We can actually find this angle here. And the reason why is because this is a straight line, at least it's supposed to be. The way I drew, drew it, it might not look straight, but it's a straight line. So that full angle needs to be 180, right? That's like half of a revolution, we could think about it, so 180. So what I can do is I can do 180 minus 38 minus 47, and whatever's left over is gonna be that interior angle here, which turns out to be 95 degrees, I believe. Let me double check that. 855, 85, yeah, 95 degrees. So we found that just using geometry. Now, is there anything else we can find? Unfortunately not, because this isn't a 100% vertical line. We can't do anything like alternate, interior, that kind of geometry stuff there. So this is all we can find, but it turns out this is all we need. So now we need to figure out law of sines, law of cosines, what can we use? And the method I like to use is first I see if I can use the law of sines, and if I can't, then I try the law of cosines. That's what I do. So. Can I use the law of sines? Well, I don't know either of these angles and I have no way of finding them, but I do know these two side lengths. So really what I'm looking for is, do I know an angle and an opposite side length that I could use to compare to some other stuff, right? So I know this angle, but I don't know this side. I know this side, but I don't know this angle. And I know this side, but I don't know this angle. So no, I don't know any corresponding angle and side. So law of sines is definitely out of the picture. Now, can I use the law of cosines? Well, let's see. If I consider using the law of cosines with this side x here, what I end up with is x squared equals. So here are each of the remaining sides, each squared, the sum of them, right? So 23 squared plus 26 squared minus two times each other side, right? 23, 26 times the cosine of the angle opposite to the original side we're considering. This is how I say it in my head as I'm writing it out. So I'm just saying it out loud. I don't like to remember formulas like C squared equals, I try to put them into words so that I can match them up with what I'm dealing with. Cosine of 95 degrees. So this works, right? So we can actually punch this entire thing into the calculator, X equals, and we're just taking the positive square root. Since this is a positive length, we don't need any plus or minus the square root of all this, and I'll really leave that you to put that in your calculator. I fully believe you're capable of punching that in. But if you do, you should get x equals 36.18. And that's all we were asked to find, 36.18 miles. Okay, so again, with these problems, set them up, see if you can use some geometry to find some additional things, and then just first see, can I use the law of sines? And if you can't, go to the law of cosines. Okay, that's how I do it. All right, number three is a little bit involved, but we're just gonna jump right into it. Tony needs to determine the height of a tree before cutting it down to be sure that it will not fall on a nearby fence. The angle of elevation from a position on a flat path to the tree is 30 degrees. So angle of elevation, this is the first time, at least through these examples that we're seeing this term, so I'll pretty quickly just talk about it. With angle of elevation and angle of depression, we're always looking at an angle forming with respect to some horizontal line. Right, so we're looking at some horizontal, and with angle of elevation, we're forming an angle above that horizontal, and with angle of depression, we're forming an angle below that horizontal. So a lot of times it comes up in contexts that have to do with like line of sight. You can think of it that way. If you're standing on the ground and then you look up, that could be like an angle of elevation, line of sight to the top of the tree, that sort of thing. So in this example, our horizontal line is our flat path leading up to the tree. So let's see how well I can draw this. So if this is our tree, and this is our flat path, then our flat path, let's see, we can say this is the first spot we're talking about, and that angle of elevation is 30 degrees. Okay, so let's continue reading. The angle of elevation from a second position 40 feet further along this path 
to the tree is 20 degrees. So we have another position 40 feet further. So let's see, something like that, second position. So this distance here is 40 feet. And this angle form from here to the top of the tree is 20 degrees, right? 20 degrees. So let me see how well I can draw this. Might be a little rough here. I think that's as good as it's gonna get, but those are supposed to meet at the same spot, okay? I think that's as good as it's gonna get for me though, 20 degrees. All right, I think that's all we're given. What are we asked to find? What is the height of the tree? H, we'll call it H. So first let's start how we always start. Can we use any like basic geometry to find some stuff? Yes, we can actually find quite a bit of things. We know that this is a 90 degree triangle because that tree is straight up and this is a horizontal flat path, right? So that means we know that this angle is 60 degrees because we have 90 plus 30 and they all have to add up to 180. I don't know if that will help us or not, but it's worth writing down. Let's see, that means that, let's see, I don't know if we know that angle yet. We know this one because these two angles form a horizontal. So those two angles have to add up to 180. So that means 30 plus whatever this angle is equals 180. So this angle is actually 50 degrees. Let's see where I can label that. Uh, 150, sorry, not 50, 150 degrees. We don't know this side length and we don't know the whole bottom side length either, but whatever the entire thing is, it's whatever this is plus 40, right? I don't know if that'll really help us. We don't know the hypotenuse. I guess I'll just label that as X. And what I wanna point out is we actually are dealing with three triangles here. We have a smaller right triangle, a non-right triangle that is also smaller, and then those two things composed together make a bigger right triangle. So three different triangles we can deal with. So my first thought is that since we're dealing with a larger right triangle, we can use SOHCAHTOA. We can use our trig functions with right triangles only, right? So that means the sine of whatever 20 degrees is, is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, okay? So I wanna find H. So if I can find X, then I can solve for H, right? But first I need to find X. So there are many different ways you can approach this problem. I just wanna make it clear. This is the way I'm doing it. You should always get the same answer though. Our answer should line up. So my strategy right now is first find X, maybe use the law of sines, law of cosines. Then once I find that hypotenuse, I can find H pretty easily, right? So let's say if we can find X. What do I have? I'm gonna look at this smaller non-right triangle and see if I can use the law of sines. Because what I notice is I have this angle of 150 and the side opposite to that angle is X. And I have this side length of 40. What is the angle opposite to this? That's this angle up here. Can I find that angle? Let's see here. I can actually, because I have this larger right triangle and I have 90 degrees, 20 degrees, so this has to total to, and actually no, I can do it an easier way. 150 plus 20 plus whatever this is has to equal 180. So this has to equal 10 degrees, but I could have done it that other way too, just a little extra work. So that's 10 degrees. So how does that help us? Well, let's look. That means that the sine of 10 degrees over 40, and I know it's hard to see that that's opposite because the triangle is so small and scrunched. If you need to write this bigger on a piece of paper, you can do that. Equals the sine of 150 over x. Yep, now I can find x pretty easily. I'm gonna flip both of these. And what's gonna happen when I flip them is I'm gonna end up multiplying both sides by the sine of 150. But if you wanna cross multiply, do algebra, whatever you gotta do, do that. But what you're gonna end up with is x equals 40 times the sine of 150 over the sine of 10 degrees. And this should give you 115.18. 115.18, and again, our length is in feet. 
But now that I have this, I can simply find h by multiplying this by the sine of 20, right? So I'm gonna take this original equation since I know that sine of 20 degrees equals h over x. Now I know x, so if I wanna find h, I can multiply both sides of this by x. And what I get is 115.18 times the sine of 20 degrees equals whatever h is, right? So we just need to punch that into the calculator and we should get 39.39. That's what I got, 39.39 feet. So that is the height of the tree. I know this one was pretty involved and there are probably quite a few different ways to do it, but I wanted to make sure to include some kind of a little bit harder example. I will also say that a lot of people want to use the law of sines even when there is a right triangle, which is perfectly fine. You will get the same thing as this you'll just end up with a sine of 90, which is one. So we'll just reduce to one. Pretty much you'll be doing the same thing, just using the law of sines instead of Sokotoa. So you can always use the law of sines, but you can only use these trig functions with right triangles. Just keep that in mind. But hopefully this example made sense. All right, so we made it to problem number four. Sorry this video is taking longer than I expected, but hopefully my explanations have been enough to help you understand these kind of word problems. Let's jump right into problem number four. A major league baseball diamond is actually a square with a side length of 90 feet. The pitching rubber is located 60.5 feet from home plate on a line joining home plate and second base. How far is it from the pitching rubber to first base? So I went ahead and drew our diamond. It only took me like 20 tries to get a decent diamond drawn. But if you're not familiar with baseball, we're gonna consider this home plate. So that means that this is first base, second base, third base, and our pitching rubber is on a line adjoining these two. So this is a directly vertical line, and then our pitching rubber is somewhere around here, right? So we're looking for this distance. That's the distance from the pitching rubber to first base, okay? And what we're given is the distance from the pitching rubber to home plate, right? The pitching rubber is located 60.5 feet from home plate. So this is 60.5 feet. That's a 60.5, right? 60.5 feet, that distance there. And we know that all these side lengths are 90 feet. I'll go ahead and write the feet because I have room. Here I don't have room for feet. 90 feet. What else do we know? Are we given any angles? We're not given any angles, but I think we can find at least one angle. Can we find an angle using just basic geometry? Well, yes. This is a square, so each of these is 90 degrees. And since it's been cut directly in half, we are cutting this 90 degree angle directly in half. So each of these angles will be 45 degrees. So we know one of the angles of the triangle we're looking at. The triangle we're sort of zooming into, that's a 45 degrees. The triangle we're sort of zooming into is this triangle, clearly, right? So we know one of the angles, can we find this angle? No, because we don't, know that this is being cut directly in half, okay? So we can't find this angle. So let's see what we can do. Can we use the law of sines? Well, let's see, we have an angle, but we don't have the opposite side. We have a side, but we don't have the opposite angle. And we have this side without an opposite angle. So law of sines is out of the picture. Let's move on and see if we can use the law of cosines. So what I like to do is just write out the formula and see if it works. X squared equals, it's gonna be the square of each of the remaining sides, the sum of those squares, I guess you could say, minus two times the remaining sides, the product of them, right? I'm using way too many parentheses here probably, but oh well. There we go, that's gonna work, right? We can punch this in a calculator, take the square root of the whole thing, and that's gonna work. So this is a great example of the law of cosines. And what I've seen, if you notice the pattern, law of cosines problems are usually quicker, right? They're usually quicker. The only time they're a little bit tricky is when we're given, I guess, a side, 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 and we're solving for the angle. But again, it's really just algebra, manipulating, and make sure you don't make any mistakes punching this in in the calculator. Use extra parentheses, in fact, when you're punching stuff in the calculator. Don't make any weird mistakes. And you can even punch this all in separately. Punch in this squared, enter, then plus this squared, enter, then minus all of this, enter, then the square root of your answer, enter. And when you do that, you should get 63.72. 
63.72, and this is in feet, right? So hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully this video helped you if you wanted to get some practice with word problems. I know it turned out to be a little bit long, but hopefully it helped. If it did, hit like, hit subscribe. If you have questions, leave them below in the comments. Most importantly, keep flexing those brain muscles, and I'll see y'all later.